Now we're moving forward into the 60s. Before we go into civil rights, we have to remember that Sputnik, the Russian-made satellite, was 1957, and it caused massive panic across the United States, actually around the world. Uh, so by 1960, we had federally funded science curriculum across the K-12 spectrum. Now, back to Brown versus Board of Education. Civil rights was still a very big and painful issue in the United States. We have Little Ruby Bridges. Uh, that is a book that you all are reading in EDUU 605. So I'm not going to give you any more detail on that. Just kind of tease it so you'll recognize it where it comes in the spectrum when we hit that. We had Title VI, which barred the use of federal funds for segregated programs in schools. Again, this is all coming off of Brown versus Board of Education, and it's being fueled by the civil rights movement across the nation. In 1964, we have the Civil Rights Act. In 1965, we have the Elementary and Secondary Education Act, which still is with us today in its many Frankenstein forms. Uh, Head Start for preschool education was begun in 1965, and in 1975, PL 94-142, Education for All Handicapped Children Act. This was massively important. Guaranteed a free and appropriate education for all special needs children. Appropriate education is still a phrase we're arguing today. What does that really mean? Does that mean individual pull-out classes? Does that mean full inclusion? It's still being debated. And then we get to Title IX, which said there could be no access for anybody to school sports programs that denied access by gender. This was all about unequal funding. This was huge. And this Many women leaders today relate experiences of being able to engage in competitive and or team sports taught them leadership skills, camaraderie in a way that they never had access to before in their ability to take on leadership roles as adults. So then we move into the 1980s. Homeschooling really took off and became a huge mainstream thing across society. In 1982, Madeline Hunter put out Mastery Teaching. This direct instruction teaching model had a great impact across the nation, particularly in elementary schools. In 1982, we also had a lawsuit, Board of Education versus PICO. What this was all about was fighting to say that books cannot be removed by a librarian because the administrators deem the content to be offensive. This is when the public was engaging directly with what was going on in the schools and trying to say, hey, we have a voice here. You can't just pull things from our libraries because one person on the school board doesn't like it. In 1983, and this is massive, we had a nation at risk published. This was a report that scared the daylights out of the country. It, it proclaimed that public education was in a horrific state. Well, to be honest, the economy was as well. And let's not forget that when there are problems, one of the first things we see across American history is rather than trying to fix the problem, the first thing we do is look for somebody to blame it on. So I'm not saying it was right or wrong. I'm saying there's a pattern repeated here. So the, the economy is a mess, and this report puts out that publication is a mess. So the answer, 1983, the, <coughs> the powers that be in 1983 demanded tougher standards. That's what's going to fix education. We need tougher standards, just like in business. We need more accountability, just like in business. So education was being looked at through the lens of a business model. And we had a great number of people who had no experience in education suddenly taking on massive leadership roles and trying to reform the American educational experience to be more like the way they were running corporations. That led to 1988, which was the back to basics movement, 
where again, what we saw was pulling art, pulling music, pulling anything that the powers that be didn't feel were essential to core competencies, reading, writing, and arithmetic. That takes us into the 90s. This is where we started seeing the voucher movement. It began in 1990 in Wisconsin with the Milwaukee Parental Choice Program. We saw the Massachusetts Education Reform Act where we had a common curriculum, not just use these books here, take your choice. Now we had a singular curriculum and statewide assessments, the Massachusetts Comprehensive Assessment System. Other states began to follow, and this is where the high stakes testing movement really took a foothold. Let's not forget in 1992, we actually had the first charter school. Then in 1998, we had the Higher Education Act. This is where the Fed started requiring institutions and states to produce report cards about teacher ed programs. This is where the whole blame the teachers for the problems across our economy really started gaining movement. Scripted curriculum and rigid instructional schedules became more than popular. They became what the public started to expect of teachers. Instead of teachers being in charge of designing the curriculum and serving the learners in front of them, it became about serving the curriculum. We started seeing quote unquote teacher proof curriculum being pushed. You had to read what was written in the book. It was scientific. That's your job. This leads into 